Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona, including this holiday weekend. So Merry Christmas, everyone. And may you have a prosperous new year next week. So it seems like the show lands this week, Christmas weekend, next week, New Year's. So if you're tuned in, I really, really appreciate that because I know there's a lot of things to do. Yeah, not in the gardens, just at your house with family and friends watching the games. So appreciate you tuning in. Uh, there's a lot going on for the holidays. There's not as much going on in the gardens unless you want to. If uh, that uncle that's driving you crazy, you just want to get outdoors and uh, get away for a bit, some fresh air, you can go out in the gardens. I'm starting to prune things back right now. So and it, there, there's plenty of time, but my back gardens, so the the wildflowers were buried with snow. What is that, a week ago or whatever? So they, they thawed this week, and now it's, it's starting to dry out a little bit. It's still pretty moist, a little bit muddy, but I could get the lawnmower out there. And so I took the lawnmower. I've got maybe, gosh, what is that? I'm looking outside the studio, and maybe there's... 1500 square feet of wildflowers it's beautiful looking outside my office window of butterflies in the spring and summer hummingbirds going back and forth it's been uh, the fly catchers and all the the the, bu- the bug eating kinds of of birds pounce around and just fly in and out eating grasshoppers in the grass it's been magical well they've been dried up for at least a month month and a half the snow came, got them to lay down, so they looked really bad. And I went, no, they aren't as inspirational as they were two months ago. I think it's time to clean things up. And so I just took the lawnmower and just ran it over top of the flowers as low as I could go and let the seed just fly all over the place. I didn't, I didn't gather them up in the, in the bag. I just went, uh, just let them chop up and go right back on the ground so it will expand or extend or add to my wildflowers. But it, and it instantly lo- looks better. It just looks better. Uh, I'm doing that right now with all of my perennials as I get a chance, including some of the things that sort of look kind of good. So the Jupiter's beard um, or, or a Ceanothus, it's a wild native kind of succulent looking perennial, gets about knee high. Pink flowers, it's been in bloom till that snow came, so it's got a long cycle. It's still showing green, but it looks, ah, it just looks, it doesn't look as clean and neat as it did in the summer and fall. So I'm going to cut it back. Even though it had green, I'm just going to cut it back to the ground because it will clean things up. The yarrows look terrible. I'm going to whack those back. So as you get a chance, you can do those. You don't have to do it all at once. Sometimes I use hedgers. So I've got this beautiful uh, Roby 40 volt uh, electric hedge shear that's magical for lighter pruning. It doesn't have a lot of strength. I wish it had more power to it uh, for shrubs and stuff, but it does pretty good on the new growth, but for perennials. I'll just get it as low to the ground as I can to shave it off down there for grasses, to cut back uh, uh, pampas grass, to coral forester grass, to bunny grass, all the ornamental grasses, not, not a lawn or turf type grass. I'm talking about pretty ornamental grasses. Does a magical job, does really great. And so some of the grasses are looking looking really good and some of them got beat up and they're looking kind of uh, winter weary. So as they start looking bad, I'll cut them back. And most grasses, you go right down to the ground. I mean, we're talking within, you know, ankle high. There's only one that you don't do that with, and that's the pampas grass. And there you go down maybe knee high or so. There's an art to it. If you get into it, you just can't figure it out. Come take a picture, bring it to the garden center. We can we can show you. We'll just take a marker and go, here's, you want to go down to here. That's where you do it. So there's an art to it. But all your perennials, those flowers that come back year after year, 
they are resting underneath the ground right now. And so, and they need this rest period. They have been blooming and growing and actively uh, working for us out in the gardens. And so they need to hibernate and rest and kind of recuperate underground. And then they'll start coming up. In fact, I was pruning back some of my mums. The mums are, the flowers are all spent. There's, there are, there's no color on my chrysanthemums. And the foliage is all brown as well. But if you look down at the base, they're already starting to grow next spring's foliage growth. It's not very tall. Maybe it's an inch high, but you can see new growth coming up. It's kind of exciting. It's kind of a hint of spring to come. So, and you know, mums, they grow early. They're kind of right up there with with uh, rosemaries and some of these others that, that very early on penstemons, there's some of these that really, they don't need it to be warm and bright. They just want any kind of sunlight and they start taking off. Well, some of those, you do want to prune those back so that that new foliage can see the sun. It'll help them to grow better, stronger, faster, come out sooner in spring. And so don't feel like you're rushed. I mean, I know it's the holidays and you're tuned in because you're bored and you know it's 30 minutes for the game. I understand, but if you need to get out, just do some, part of this was the snow melted and so I could get to the gardens and I had an afternoon. I went, eh. I'm going to do it now. I got the lawnmower. It'll power up and it'll take an hour and I'm done. So part of it was just timing. I can get in the gardens. My backyard still covered in snow. I'm not going to get to that till that'll probably be covered in snow until the end of February, March. Well, that's when I'll go back there and prune those uh, at that point. So uh, to shrubs starting to prune back a few of the shrubs, mainly the summer shrubs, like a butterfly bush. Uh, they can look a little, I'm just cleaning things up so it looks more just organized. Things look a little over overgrown right now because they've had all last spring, summer, fall to grow, and now they've dropped their foliage, the foliage is on the ground, and now they're just twigs out there in the yard. They need to be shaped. And I'm just doing that as I get a chance. The grapes are being cut back. Uh, those have been dormant for at least a month and a half. All of your, whether it's a table grape or a vineyard grape, take your time. At this altitude, uh, they're, they're, they're dormant. And so you can kind of take your time and do it as you, as you choose. You don't have to feel rushed. Uh, so sometimes you'll tune into or, or download or stream or, or, or Google some of your national information. They're, they're, this, these are vineyard folks that are doing commercial production. Going, oh, no, you have to do it just exactly this way and just this time. There's a two, 10-day window to prune all this. We're not doing, we don't care about an extra 50 bushels per acre for our grapes. We just want a, a few tables, a few bowls full and, and for it to look good and be healthy. You've got plenty of time. Backyard gardening is, is totally different than commercial production type of, of gardening. So I'm just slowly getting things ready out there. The main thing this week, watch the breakage. Don't let your faucets break don't let them freeze and so that's something that I, I, I something i kind of preach for a few weeks just because we've had even this week two more customers had hose bibs break uh, the backflow preventer seemed to be what went this week there's a for some of you there's a metal mechanism that sticks out of the ground it's called a backflow preventer and they keep that so what that what that particular piece of plumbing does if you've got a drop in pressure at the street so the city water it, that particular mechanism the backflow keeps your 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 irrigation water from sucking back up into the city potable water supply so it keeps the city water going to the neighborhood cleaner neater safer so it, there is a place for it and that's what it's made to do it keeps in case the city a well goes down or pump goes down or something happens it keeps that water out in the yard that's just laying there sometimes sometimes it's even you know we put fertilizer injectors it keeps that water it's a break that doesn't allow that water once it goes past that backflow preventer it can't come back into your into your house or city water supply anyway that's don't let that thing freeze 
it's a really expensive part. If it, if it breaks, it's like a three, four, five hundred dollar part. I haven't looked since COVID, but I'm sure it's more than it was back when I saw it a couple of years ago. Don't let it freeze. It's an expensive piece. Anyway, a lot in store for you. Lisa Watersling coming in with your garden questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop. Found in Prescott. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. This, this segment is all about what are you asking? What are other gardeners in the neighborhood talking about? What are they coming in for? What are they seeing? And so there's still gardening going on. It's lighter. The tomatoes are gone. There's not a lot of flowers, but there's some things going on. So one thing I'm noticing right now. Oh, welcome to the studio, Lisa. Well, thank you. <laughs> so uh, one thing I'm noticing is you're starting to see the winter evergreens turning yellow. Oh, that yeah. winter chlorosis. Mm-hmm. If you didn't fertilize back in October... This is when you see, you can, you can walk through your neighbor. You can tell which neighbors didn't fertilize, which has a, the landscape companies, the mow and blow guys are, are just doing it for them and they didn't fertilize it the right thing or whatever. And, and so you see this yellowing mm-hmm. of the foliage. Some of them in the neighborhood are rich, dark green. You're going, oh, those look healthy. The other ones are currently yellow. So Theodore Cedars, Retifotinias. Euonymus ketonia so you can just kind of tell. So that's one thing I'm noticing. Mm-hmm. Why are they turning yellow? Just fertilize them. <laughs> you should fertilize. If you've got new plants right now, yeah. the, the new year is kind of a, a marker. You should fertilize those with an all-purpose plant. We make a, 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 a 744 all-purpose food that we make for here, but it has a lot of sulfur in it. It's got acidic. It's got cottonseed meal very acidic. So it makes those evergreens, which like more acidic soil, and it's got some iron and some other stuff. It keeps them green and it mainly sets the stage. The the buds will start forming right now through February. The next eight to 10 weeks are critical for uh, conifers. That is things like spruce, pine, fir, cypress, cedars, junipers. These are all conifers. They generally flush once a year, and that's it. In the spring, that's it. And whatever growth you have, that's all you're going to get. Well, if you've got a new landscape, that's the most important thing. You want as much growth as you can. Fertilize them now. Mm-hmm. And again, uh, usually in March, first part of April, do it again, and you'll get the maximum uh, maturity out of that new growth in spring mm-hmm. uh, compared to other folks that didn't do that. Yeah. So anyway. Do you also recommend uh, using the humic acid? Oh, for new things, especially humic acid is, is is basically you organic gardeners, you know what humic acid is. It, it's a, if you boil down a, a layer of compost down to its last element, that's humic acid. And so plants thrive on that. They absolutely root out and do better. But if you want the maximum undergrowth for, for plants, humic acid. Mm-hmm. If you want the most top growth, that is the, the new foliage, new needles coming out, the seven four four all purpose food and they they worked in they work in tandem right. they help each other work mm-hmm. better especially for new anything stress anything you just want more out of you want better color 
it works really, really well. Okay. So anyway, yep. Yeah, humic yeah. acid, all purpose food. Uh-huh. That's the magic. I didn't mean to talk <laughs> about that. I just, I was driving through a neighborhood and I went, wow, things are really looking yellow. Yeah. I went, oh, that's the reason why. That's, mm-hmm. I just noticed it this week. Right, right. Well, should we do questions? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Mike has some property out in Kirkland. Great, Mike, all right. want to do some home orchard type thing. Yeah. Wants to know what type of fruit trees and berries would you recommend for that area? Sure. So Mike, we're Skull Valley people who raised, raised all of our kids in that same valley. So we're very familiar. Love it. We miss it. When our kids started driving, our oldest... <laughs> We said, gee, stupid and teenagers go in the same sentence. Yeah. We didn't want a car involved. So we moved closer to the high school just for safety because we've lost a few of our kids. Uh, I mean, those valley, that's, that we've, we, that's a dangerous road. And so we don't want them drinking and driving. Whatever else they do when they're teenagers, it just happens. It's okay. Just trying to get us yeah, just driving. Yeah, they're just learning how to drive. So we moved into town. We still miss it. So a big family compound there in Skull Valley. Anyway, Mike, back to fruit trees. You would think you'd be, you're 4,000 foot, 4,200 feet, something like that. We're up to 5,000, 5,200 feet. You're 1,000 feet lower. You would think you'd be warmer. You're not. You need the same trees we use up here because that cold air settles in on those valley areas where where all those uh, farm ranch uh, new homes are. And so you're dealing with apples and pears are tremendous out there. We had tremendous apricots. They, they do actually better yeah. out in Kirkland than they do here in, in let's say, in the Prescott, uh, Prescott Valley area, Chino Valley. Um, peaches do amazingly well. Uh, persimmons, uh, plums will do fantastic. You just want the late bloomers. Mm-hmm. So out of all that you'll be tempted in Kirkland to go with a desert variety, Don't do it. Mike, listen to me. Don't do it. (laughs) You want to stay with the mountain, the higher elevation ones, the ones that need more chilling hours. And those are the ones that are going to perform better for you. So uh, um, what else? Uh, Apples, nectarines. Uh, He mentioned berries and grapes. Grapes will do amazing. They grow wild down in Kirkland. They'll do well out there from Table grapes, like the hemrods, concords, the thing, just the, the one you want to pick off the vine and just my mouth's watering thinking about them right now, to vineyard grapes. So your Chardonnays, Cabernets, they'll all do well too. So mm-hmm. all of those are well good. We haven't quite started shipping those. They're, they're starting to, we're starting to plan. Usually mid-January to the, sometime the end of January, we'll start shipping plants in and we start with fruit trees. And so you want to put those in if you can, if you're doing an orchard. Boy, if you could get those in the ground before they wake up, that's in spring, good. that's the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that would be by the, by the end of March. Mm-hmm. I think fruit trees are starting to wake up by then. Yeah. And so if you can put them in then, don't feel pressured, but you got some time. But you should feel the pressure. <laughs> Go for it. And so that's that's we'll start loading up early yeah. with those. Those are kind of the first trucks. Yep. So mm-hmm. into January, February, we start loading up the garden center with fruit trees. Uh, not so much grapes. A few yeah. blueberries, yeah. Some, a few yeah. berries, a, few things. a lot of fruit trees. Mm-hmm. The uh, berries and grapes generally start showing up March. So mm-hmm. a little bit. So you're at the leading edge of spring. Anyway, mm-hmm. you uh, gosh, fruit trees. All right. I love it. Mike's already <laughs> calling in thinking <laughs> about it. Ahead. Ahead. So Julie's out in Prescott Valley. Her pampas grass, which was big and beautiful. And yeah, lovely, fantastic. Kind of got roughed up with the yeah. snow yeah. and weather. She wants to know, is can she trim it back now or should she wait? To trim it. Oh, trim it. You're fine now. You can't kill a pampas grass. You probably need to try. (laughs) This is a massive grass. It gets up well above head high. Mm -hmm. Those big white plumes. And she's saying it looks a little off because, well, that snow and rain kind of makes those plumes. It kind of beats them down so they look wispy and thin. And it's time. Mm -hmm. Cut them back. Uh, You'll cut them back at your convenience. I would say anytime between now and the end of March. Mm -hmm. Pick a nice day. Power up the chainsaw and whack on it. How far back? Back to about knee high. So you'll look down in there. You'll see this under matting uh, for pampas grass. So you're not cutting it right back to the ground like you do all the other grasses. You're taking it back to about a foot, 18 inches or so. And you'll see this the curly Q kind of undergrowth. Cut it back to there. Fertilize it with the all-purpose plant food. And it will take off for you again. Another secret with those things that bloom a lot 
lilacs, mm -hmm. all your ornamental grasses, uh, fruit trees, they would benefit from super phosphate. Mm -hmm. It's a zero fifteen zero. When you're fertilizing that, if you could put some super phosphate a couple times in spring to early summer on that plant, you will have even more plumes and they'll be even larger because it's picking up that phosphorus. Uh, that's what makes those flowers and plumes. Uh, things that bloom in the spring, uh, forsythia, flowering quince, rhododendrons, azaleas, camellias, all those things that bloom early, 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 they're going to benefit from superphosphate. And I would say it's now, now this, this, this New Year's time frame, it's a really good time because they're forming those buds right now for spring growth. So you can give it a little bit of phosphorus, then pray for snow, <laughs> superphosphate, pray for snow, kind of you'll get bigger buds, mm -hmm. bigger flowers on your lilacs, better Better flowers, I would say also the super, do that at the same time. The all-purpose plant food, 744, plus superphosphate, 0150. You're going to have one amazing growth, mm -hmm. flowers and fragrance this next spring. Just by, I mean, it kind of seems off. Winter, I shouldn't be doing that. This is when they form the buds right now. So you should be doing that. So there he goes, the insider tip on better flowers this spring. Thank you, Lisa. Great questions this week. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, back right after this. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Stress melts away with water's finest quality plants curated for a better night's sleep. Imagine a five-star sleep experience waiting for you every night at home. Bask in the comfort of these plants as they absorb harmful chemicals and pollen. Purifying bedroom air, creating your own living oxygen tent, as refreshing as a forest rain. A good night's rest starts at Waters Garden Center. Natural, safe, organic. Waters Garden Center in Prescott, also found on the web at top10houseplants.com. We believe retirement means more time to garden and plants make you happier at Waters Garden Center. Hi, Ken here with the finds of the week and our Deodor Cedars. A standalone tree so beautifully shaped it's referred to as the Christmas tree. Fastest growing of the evergreen trees used for quick screens, windbreaks, and privacy. Graceful arches sweep through the landscape in colors of blue to green from the stately tree. An evergreen lover's dream for fast, thick growth. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love majestic evergreens, they love to shop. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. One thing to watch inside your house be careful of your house plants. You know, we've we've moved them around. House plants, they don't like anything different. They don't like new spaces. They don't like it when it's short days. They don't even like a change between spring and summer. They like it to be the same temperature, water, light all the time. Well, our houses are in they they're beautifully they're decorated, but trees kind of displace some other plants and so they'll start to drop some leaves. So just realize that. Be really gentle with the plants that are inside of your house. That goes for poinsettias, Christmas cactus, amaryllis. Some of the Christmas cactus, I'm going out this week, I've been out shopping, getting Christmas gifts done. And, and some of the poinsettias look terrible. They're, they're being, they're either cold or they're way overwatered. They get in these sleeves, they put this foil around the, soil, around the roots, which is really pretty, but the roots can't breathe. And so then we water and they just, they drown. And not only can they not breathe, but now they can't drown. So it's like uh, putting saran wrap around your face going, yeah, enjoy the living room and look good. And then we go ahead and waterboard you after that. That's sort of what we do to our, some of our holiday plants. They just get too moist and they're, no, they're not used to that. They like the same temperature, same light, same water all the time, yet we wrap them in this foil 
or they get over cared for, they're over watered. So I'll take that out of the sleeve and I'll put it in the sink and I'll water that, my house plants, especially the decorative or holiday ones, in the sink. And then some of these plants, they will keep that color through through February or so. I mean, a beautiful red poinsettia says Christmas, but it also says Happy Valentine's. But eventually those leaves will drop off and that plant will go back into green. It will just be a solid, beautiful, green, tropical plant. That's what a poinsettia truly is. We have to trick them into turning red. And, and the, the little caveat, what, what you can do with that, if you want to keep that poinsettia alive and you think you got green thumbs, you can bring that thing back into color next next spring next not next spring next winter and so for the holidays and the trick is it needs to be in an area with uninterrupted darkness so starting oh usually the end of february or so it takes about six weeks for that plant six eight it kind of depends on temperature there's some variables but six eight weeks you want to start introducing dark nights to that point set again and it starts to get trick it into oh it must be time to go into color and so it takes uninterrupted if you put it in a bedroom where lights come on and off on and off it won't turn for you if you're in an area say you've got a family where there's people coming and going all the time put it in a closet where you can control that light uh, in the greenhouse uh, grew, I grew poinsettias for many, many years, hundreds, thousands of them. Uh, we, we do commercial grows, and I had a, a furnace go down, a heater. These things don't like to be cold. Well, the furnace is going down. It's an emergency. It's night. The temperature's dropping, and I know we'll lose you know, a thousand poinsettias. We went in to fix the heater and had a light in there, just just right there. We knew we didn't need. We knew we didn't want to turn all the lights on. We had like a lantern just where the furnace was, got it reactivated, got it going, and doggone it. If we didn't see where that where that ray of light was, where that lantern was, for what was that? Just four, five, six hours it took us to fix that? It, it affected the crop underneath it just that one night. And so you really want to make sure it's in an area where it doesn't get any any light. Just want, it's when it's night, it's, it's going to be dark for the rest of the night. And then the day... It's bright. It likes light during the day, not during the night. That's how you trick it into coming in back into color. It's pretty easy, actually, if you got that one trick. You almost, you almost let it go dormant. If you ever want to try that, I've got a handout. Uh, actually, I've got it on my website, I believe. If you go to watersgardencenter.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a search bar. and Just go poinsettia, and it'll, it'll come up. It'll be one of the first... You know, how to bring a poinsettia up into back into color. Got one on amaryllis, one on Christmas cactus, but enjoy it now. But take care of your houseplants. They're freaking out right now. The days are really short. They've been moved around to make room for this huge, huge tree called a Christmas tree. All the decorations. When that's done, and you know, next week you're going to take that out and you're going to put those houseplants back. So they're always getting these different areas of the house and they're freaking out treat them with care keep the dust off of them keep them from the draft from that front door guests coming and going keep them where they're a little bit warmer watch the watering probably water them no oh, every other week or so that's about right you really don't need to fertilize them much right now but as the days get longer let's say in about three four weeks and we start to see oh we're finally over the hump and we've got you know into january we're starting to see the days getting warmer you can just tell spring is on its way if you can fertilize right then those plants they'll start to push new foliage out they'll look like a brand new plant by the end of february and the, the best fertilizer i've ever seen for house plants we make a, a compost tea here at the garden center it's called root and grow the grow piece for house plants oh they really like root and grow but just a liquid you just put it around the root balls but that's just kind of take care of your house plants we've got lisa waters lane coming back in the studio with her garden segment we'll right after this the Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. 
Hi, Lisa here with the Plants of the Week and our Arizona Gold Euonymus. An excellent choice for colored hedges and as tough as they come. This evergreen displays bold gold, head-high foliage that grows even thicker when sheared. A single shrub makes a bold statement for just $27, but in rows they make excellent visual and sound barriers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love bold gold hedges, they love to shop. We believe in family, church, community, and friendships here at Waters Garden Center. My living room feels so empty. Now that the Christmas tree is gone, the house just seems so blah. Brighten it up with a big, bold, beautiful plant from Waters Garden Center. Fill that cavernous space with tall tropicals, colossal cactus, and sizable succulents that bring the great outdoors indoors. Make a gorgeous green space you can enjoy all year, not just for a season. Unique, exclusive, one-of-a-kind houseplants found only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we're back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week and just shares her garden. What are her gardens doing? Just what's <laughs> happening in your gardens? What are you seeing? Right now. I'm outside now. Although you, we did plant some uh, junipers, some pansies a couple of weeks ago in the back. I was chipping through the containers. I was chipping through the ice layer, just throwing pansies in there going, I know you'll thaw up and be happy. And I was scooped off that snow off the top of them right after planting. And they're in bloom. They're happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the main thing is if you do have snow on your flowers, don't let the snow, they want to see the sun. So yeah. kind of pull off that snow yeah. just so the flowers and foliage can mm-hmm. see the sun. They'll be happier. So anyway, welcome back to the studio. Thank Lisa, you. what do you got for us? What's the, besides uh, <laughs> hot toddy recipes or, or uh, big yeah. cookies? Well, we are spending a lot more time inside we are. this time of year. Yeah. And sometimes it's a good idea to look around your house and go, hmm, hmm. hmm. Maybe I need some house plants. Oh, I like the way you're going. I like the way you're sounding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I thought I'd talk about a few of the house plants that we've gotten in that are some are different and unusual. Some are the if you're not a pro, we've got some that are easy care and yeah. all of that. Yeah. So yeah, Great. house plants. House plants. That's good. Not holiday plants. That's no. kind of come and gone. Those are all I mean, we're down to I think the dredges at this point. <laughs> Uh, but basically, it's 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 yeah. regular like uh, philodendrons and, mm-hmm. and uh, succulents and right. pothos and so yeah. all the other exotics I see we've got in. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. Yeah. So there's I figured there's always room for a house plant. Whether yeah. it's a window, a counter, a bathroom, a living room. What's your absolute favorite house plant? If you can only have you're on, a, you're on an island, there's no palm trees. <laughs> it's just you and one house plant. What would the one house plant be? Ah, uh, you had to pick one. Just one. Just one. I probably pick a ZZ plant. A oh, super easy. Super gotcha. easy to take care of. Yeah. Of course, if I'm on an island, I have nothing else to do. You so maybe care. I want a plant that's more <laughs> needs more care. Yeah. Give myself something to do. I would probably go with a spider plant. I don't know. Okay. They they grow. They throw off the little pups off the mm-hmm. side. You can go and else divide those and make more. Maybe. Maybe ZZ could be okay. Pothos is so easy. Yeah. I would do that. I've got several I would, I'd, but the easiest care, that would be something. I like spider plants. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there's better ones. So, okay. We just derailed <laughs> the whole program. What do you, that's true. There probably are better ones. I'm talking about me. So, the, the first few I'm going to talk about are um, a little unusual in their coloring. Okay. So, these are all ones that are kind of, and this is kind of a new trend in houseplants, to have them kind of a, a bright uh, color, whether it's yellow or a real light green. Yeah. Um, and they're really kind of cool, especially if you have a lot of houseplants and you want to mix something in that's different and unusual. Yeah. Um, these are great ones to put in. And they're all actually really easy to take care of. They're not ones that are difficult. So um, we have a lemon lime philodendron. See, fillies are good. So That's fillies. good. The fillies is a huge family. Of yeah, plants, it is. They're ginormous. These are really cool. They have the bigger leaf to them, but there are, are uh, 
almost like a neon green, yeah. I would call it very, very bright. Um, some people walk in and go, now, why is that yellow? And I'm like, it's supposed it's, to it's be It's a golden color. color. It's, yeah, it doesn't it's look sickly. It looks yellow. like it's glowing, right. especially at night when you turn the lights mm -hmm. off. They're really bright. Right. So it's a really cool plant, very brightly colored, easy to take care of. It's not a heavy water user. Um, most of these plants are going to want a bright room. It doesn't have to be direct sun. Um, but just a bright room is yeah. kind of a nice color. So the lemon, lime, Philly, almost all of them have like lemon or lime in their name. Of course. <laughs> I would call them nightlight. <laughs> nightlight philodendron because they glow. They will replace a nightlight in your house because they're so bright at night. Hmm. Okay, man, that's a bad. That's an advertiser. <laughs> Come, I could spin that a little You're better. Yeah. <laughs> so the Dracaena, there's a limelight Dracaena, yeah. which is, there again, it's that real neon green looking leaf. Is that fuchsia? No, it's a, fuchsia. Uh, not fuchsia. But I'm trying to think, what are <laughs> some other? Chartreuse, that's okay. it. Chartreuse. That would be the closest color, yeah. yeah. So that's a really good one. It's a, it's a broader leafed Dracaena. But there again, being the Dracaena family, it's very low water usage. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really need a ton of light, um, but a nice, you know, fairly bright room. But well, it doesn't have to be a lot of light. Talking to the growers that, that kind of develop mm -hmm. these, the breeders, um, they say that if it's in a brighter room, it keeps that bright, intense color. Right. If it's more of a, a dark, kind of a bathroom kind of thing, it'll go more traditional green, mm -hmm. like a, like our forest green. It goes right. reverts back. Mm -hmm. So the brighter the light, or the room, the brighter the colors. Does that make sense? So I've noticed, so I have a couple of them um, that have unusual coloring in them, but they get like pretty good sun in the morning, maybe an hour, maybe two. Um, and then the rest of the day is not bright light. It's just fair, it's just an average room. Yeah. But they keep their color really well because they're getting that one to two yeah. hours of that Perfect. really not sitting in the window. Going to burn the leaves sun, but the sun streaming through yeah. under the counter. I think that's a case for you know, orchids, for mm -hmm. African violets, for lipstick plant, yeah. for aloes. Mm -hmm. They all would, would appreciate that. So that's almost the perfect spot mm -hmm. for a houseplant. Right. So the other one is also a Dracaena. It's called, this one's lemon lime. Okay. <laughs> Show me your lemon plants so that don't form one, fruit. This one I really like because it's variegated. Uh, so it has kind of a stripe of dark green and it has a stripe of that chartreuse green. Oh, it's very green. neat. Uh, yeah. So it's giving you that texture and coloring. So I actually like that one a lot. Yeah. It's pretty cool. A little bit more narrow type leaf. but um, So the trend is lemony, limey. Colors. Yes. Okay. So there's a, Yellow. Golds. A moho um, spathophyllum. Okay. So most spathophyllums, peace lilies, people see, they have that real dark green leaf and it puts on that little white bloom. Well, yeah. these there again have that real neon colored leaf to them. Very, very pretty. And then the other one is just called neon philodendron, which is more of a hanging plant for right Oh, sure. Um, very, very pretty. But there again, this that really bright green color that shows up. And then we have some that the stems of the plants are dark, uh, different color. Like, so we have a sun red philodendron. Oh, so the, 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 the stems are red? The, the stems are red. That's neat, like, like a, a really manzanita. Dark red. Yeah. And the leaves are a nice dark green. So it's just a really pretty color combination for that. Um, we also have one, it's another philodendron called um, it's the Congo Rojo. Congo, I like. So the leaf is a little bit bigger on it, but they're getting that real dark red stem. So it's just really cool to have that color yeah. in there. Um, we also have a raven ZZ plant. So most people are familiar with the ZZ, super easy care plant. You water it maybe once a month. It has a really nice uh, green leaf to it, but the raven has a really Dark green, almost black leaf. Neat. That's too. the name, Raven yeah. Black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really cool color there again. If you got a lot of green, make some other color. Into, sorry, yeah. <laughs> pounding to do. Uh, but that's a really cool one to look at. And then we also have a lot of um, ficus, uh, whether the rubber tree plant or the fiddle leaf fig. We got some really nice rubber trees. Now these are big plants now. Yeah. Now we're talking floor plants. They get right. substantial. 
So, um, of course, the fiddly fig has that dark green leaf to it, but it's just a really unique plant in its leaf because it looks like looks a fiddle. Looks like a fiddle, yeah. It's got a <laughs> fiddle shape. Yeah. yeah. Um, some of the, the rubber trees we have, and we have the regular green rubber tree plant. We also have some that have more of a burgundy leaf to them. Yeah. Um, and then we also have some that are variegated, kind of a cream and green color. As so well. rubber tree, these are... Big leaves, probably six inches round, mm -hmm. can be elongated, right. very thick, mm -hmm. which makes them lower water user. You have a real waxy kind of coating to the mm -hmm. foliage, yeah. which makes them give them this almost a 3D effect, mm -hmm. uh, which makes them very easy to care for. Yes. I mean, what kind of light do those kind of trees need? There again, just a bright, bright room, room is all it needs. And you can do that with lighting. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Bring you know good lighting in it. Yeah, that. absolutely. We do that at the garden center. We use a, a daylight LED lights. We're mm -hmm. trying to be efficient with the with the right. power, but the bright the intensity just makes plants really really happy. We don't bring in fancy lighting. No, just, just brighter lights. That's good enough for most of these plants that are mm -hmm. they're these are tropical plants are used to being on the subfloor, right. kind of getting filtered light from the from the canopy layer, and they're happy with that. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lisa. So mm -hmm. great house plants you can have in your house right now. anytime in the winter. Now, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back with this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Hi, Waters with the Plants of the Week and our Roman Beauty Roseberry. This Mediterranean beauty has graceful, arching branches that flow over rock walls, raised beds, or container's edge. A culinary herb often used in potpourri. Rugged, deer-resistive, evergreen likes crummy soil, drought, and abuse. Now that's my kind of shrub for under $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love unusual, healthy herbs, they love to shop. We believe plants make you happier and that local nurseries rock at Waters Garden Center. Hi, Waters with the plant of the week and our red cobweb hens and chicks. Tiny rosettes are covered with crazy cobweb-like hairs, then open and spread to make a dense, succulent ground cover. This drought-loving perennial flushes red in the spring with cactus pink flowers in the summer. Perfect for planting in rock gardens, super attractive in containers, and just $14. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love crazy new succulents, they love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. We are starting to gear up. The new year is coming. We, we closed down our shop. I just gave the staff some extra PTO time. I said, go home, enjoy your time. We've had a stressful, I mean, retail is very stressful, especially when people are grumpy sometimes. And so there's this fatigue thing that's going on with folks. And then some folks, I think they've been hibernating too long where they don't know what is socially acceptable or what's not. Maybe they're off their meds sometimes, but generally gardeners are really good. But every once in a while, you'll get one every, every day or two where they just go, I didn't see that one coming. Wow, that's interesting. And you just kind of let, you let it, in retail, you kind of let it kind of slide off pretty easily, but sometimes it affects you. It's been one of those kinds of years. So I just said, hey, we're going to close from uh, New Year's Eve through the second so monday january 3rd we're back open but we're coming back with a vengeance and so they've ordered up some huge number i was actually scared to see that that that's a lot of house plants uh are you sure you you folks want to bring that many yep they're going to bring them so and, and they're planning this here's their here's their logic this is my my managers they're going ken the house plants are going to fill the spot where the Christmas tree was. There's going to be a huge void inside the house once that Christmas tree comes down. All those decorations, they're going to want something. We need plants, boss. Up, up the open to buy. We need some more. I'm going to, okay, good logic. Come in. Let's see what happens. Go for it. But some house plants, they're easier to grow than others. 
And so some of the easiest, I mean, just absolute, if, if you're going to start with a house plant or you've got a difficult room that just has this weird lighting or it's super high ceilings you're not used to or some some a draft that you're not you've not gardened in before go go with pothos you cannot kill that plant it's a it's a trailing house plant usually it's put on a plant stand or on a hanging basket or something up in the kitchen uh, up on a, on a cabinet where it trails down and those tendrils will actually grow around the kitchen. I mean, you can have 12, 15, 20 foot vines growing around. It's kind of neat. Uh, I personally don't like them. It seems overgrown to me, so I keep them trimmed. So as it, as it gets too long, I've got one on a beautiful um, plant stand. Once that tendril drops to the ground, I don't want it crawling across the dining room and living room. I just go trim it. I give it a haircut. You can do the same thing. and It makes it bushier, fuller, especially if you're fertilizing it. It really gets nice and thick and full and tropical looking. Philodendron is the same way. It's kind of a, it's difficult. A novice would have a difficult time seeing the difference. It has a little bit darker, richer green to it, but just as easy to grow. Another one that's super easy, that's kind of almost fun, that you can propagate and create more kind of plants with it, is spider plant. It's this beautiful, has like a, almost has like a hairdo section to it, but it has little pups, little babies that drop down on, on long stems that hover below the mother plant, below the this lime green looking striped foliage. And then you can harvest those pups and put them into a nice seedling mix in, in its own kind of soil, and it will start forming another plant. It's kind of fun. One that a lot of folks have done this week, it's been, been interesting, uh, air plants. Air plants don't have any roots. They don't have any soil. They're, they grow typically up where the orchids grow, up in the trees, the foliage of the trees, uh, shrubs. And so they're not truly a parasite. They're not like, uh, let's say, mistletoe, where they're growing into the plant and sucking the life out of this plant. Mistletoe is very invasive, and eventually a plant will actually succumb to a mistletoe attack, unless you cut it out or really be aggressive with it. Air plants aren't that way. They tend to just hover and they're getting their nutrients from the air, the moisture from the air. So as you have a lightning storm or rain comes down or it actually pulls moisture from that, just, just humidity in the air will do it. And so the way you take care of those in your house is you'll take them every, I don't know, 10, seven, 10 days or so. When you remember, take them to a sink, soak them in the sink when they're done taking in all that moisture they'll you put them back where you know people put them in uh, terrariums globes i was helping a customer that had some really funky fun ceramic faces uh they had one that had they took the air plant and it made it look like it had hair it was it was a piece of art truly truly artistic it's fun to see what people are doing but there must be at least 20, 25 varieties, different ones, straight ones, draping ones, chubby ones, thin ones. There's just no end to, to what types of air plants that come with. Had a new variety with long, kind of real thin tendrils and red tips. Super unusual. So they're kind of fun. There's a lot of air plants out there. Most of them are boring or they've been done many times before, but we're always trying to search for that new, different, unusual one, but super easy to take care of, care of. That's where you use an air plant in, in, let's say, an office or someplace it's, it's harder to grow things. And that's where you use those. They're fun gift ideas. They're just fun to play with. Another one we got, and there's, I think there's a couple hundred more coming, um, African violets are surprisingly easy to grow in the house or in an office or something. And what I find is it comes down to lighting. If you put that African violet where it's, let's say, east-facing window, I find that's where my best blooming, best active growing, or, or an Arizona room, uh, a, a warm room that's nice and bright, but not direct full sun in that middle of the day, boy, African violets just bloom their hearts out for you. And there's so many, they're cute little plants. African violets are maybe... 
four inches tall and they come in in every color under the rainbow as far as flowers go. They just hover above the foliage. In fact, the new varieties, some of the foliage is even, even different. So it's a variegated, generally they're a dark green velvet type of color. That's what the foliage looks like. That's why they make special pots, African violet pots, just for that plant because the foliage is so velvety that it tends to hold moisture and then it, that moisture spots the leaves and can cause damage. So an African violet pot, you plant your African violet in this pot and then it's got another pot that you, you sleeve this clay pot with. And so, how do you explain this over the airwaves? The, uh, the main container bowl you pour water in that and that's the moisture wicks from the bottom up into the root zone the foliage never sees watered so that's a that's an easier way if you struggle with some african violets they're pretty but mainly they make african violets bloom longer stronger better without disease and problems african violet um, orchid pots are the same way if you've had an orchid and it's done blooming and it's just a green chubby foliage there many of those african or, or orchids need to be transplanted they make special aerated containers so it's a very pretty pot it's very artistic but it's got drainage holes not holes but slots or decorative breather holes and then you use a very special Orchid mix or bark for something that drains really well. So orchids are like air plants. They grow up in the trees. They don't grow into, into soil. They grow up in the trees and they pull their moisture and the fertilizers and stuff from the air. And so they want to be, have a really breathable uh, type of, of soil and type of container. So there's a specialty. If you, if you struggle with that, that's probably why you've struggled. Get an African violet, get an, <laughs> an orchid container and special orchid soil or orchid bark, and your success rate will just skyrocket just like that. And once they go back into bloom, They'll bloom for six months straight. They'll bloom their hearts out. So lots of lots of house plants coming up uh, that you can grow, uh, especially as we start to redecorate for the winter after the holiday plants and, and decorations are taken down. Got more in store for you. Be right back after this, though. Don't change that dial. Be right back with more garden tips, tricks, and garden advice. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop. Found in Prescott. We believe dogs make shopping more fun. So bring your dog to Waters Garden Center. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. Lots of, it's kind of a, a relaxing week if you have a garden center. Garden centers are very seasonal. So spring is just sheer mayhem. Early spring, it's very busy, mainly because you're really setting up, you're, you're reloading, you're shipping all the new products. And that starts the end of January through March. It's just unload truck, thousands of trees, thousands and thousands of perennials and annuals and shrubs. It's just busy. And then sales start to come up, but it can have a snowstorm, especially in northern Arizona. The weather can be inclement. I mean, just it's just kind of you just never know what you're going to get. And it can all be in the same week. 
so you just be ready for it but april may june it's it's just sheer nuts it's fun it's energetic summer is kind of my I have the most fun just because the summer flowers are so big and so striking. The, the butterflies are so big. The hummingbirds are coming and going. It's just a fun time in the gardens. Fall is a time of transition. It's more of a decoration time. So I, I enjoy it. We're coming off the fall season. And now just all those leaves, they're just in the way. I'm tired of them swirling around. I'm trying to rake them up, get rid of the last ones. But okay, that's, that's autumn for you. Winter is just more of a relax, so you get to kind of throttle back and just enjoy. Sip another cup of tea, bake some more cookies. Uh, there's a lot of planning strategies. Right now we're planning for the spring season, and so we're gearing up. We're starting to go, okay, we're going to need that truck going to this farm, then go over to here and get this, load this, come up, and we'll take that uh, uh, January 20th. So we're, we're all this kind of strategy starting to happen. So if you're thinking about gardening, it's a great time. If you want to see things as they're coming in, it's kind of a fun. We're starting to get better with this digital website stuff. And so top 10 plants. We've set up a whole website. Just It's our shopping cart. It's what we see here in the garden center. There's not a lot there right now because we're at our lowest inventory levels. But starting in three or four weeks, it starts coming in. And before it even comes into stock, even while it's on the back dock, the, my, my crew is good enough. They start loading that up on the website. So sometimes you folks that are checking the, the shopping cart on the, on the website, you're actually seeing that plant, that fruit tree, perennial, shade trees, flowering shrub, whatever it is, you're seeing that before anyone else does, even sometimes before the staff. It kind of gets a little awkward. Going, yeah, I see you, so you have this new Vitex in. Where is it? Going, we haven't had Vitex in six months. What are you talking about? And we go look in the back dock, and sure enough, there it is. You got this new braided apple. You, we don't, we haven't seen that yet. Where is it? You go across the street, and there it is, waiting to come in into stock that afternoon. Take a look at it, top10plants.com. The website is starting to show up, uh, the classes. So we start January 15th is our first garden class. It's on houseplants. We'll do wildflowers and, and you know how to prep soils. And it's all things that are right the sequence we want to help you get to work with the environment not against it especially in the mountains at higher altitudes this is super important so the class the garden classes they're free they're every saturday at 9 30 they're out in that back greenhouse no matter the weather we can keep it warm and very nice but we've been doing this for for decades and so we're starting to load those up i think we've got through february on our website and our Facebook page. Those are kind of the two places we store those. Facebook, I know that's kind of old school for you younger folks. And oh, that's so, that's so 2000s. Uh, Facebook, oh, what about Instagram? They don't have a format to show off your classes. So I've got some memes that are coming up that'll show you date and what it's, we're trying, uh, but it's all kind of, it's like a moving target sometimes. Well, that's it for this show. The very last show of 2000. 21. May I wish you and your family the merriest of weekends and a prosperous new year. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Did you know that plants can help you sleep better naturally? At Waters Garden Center, we have beautiful houseplants that not only look great, they clean the air we breathe. Get this. Some plants can actually produce oxygen at night and even take mold spores out of the air, making for less tossing and turning and more beauty sleep. Don't lose sleep. Rise and shine with unique, gorgeous houseplants for your best rest yet at Waters Garden Center. Sweet dreams. If you enjoy this show and would like to hear more, please subscribe to The Mountain Gardener wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And if you'd like even more garden tips, tricks, and helpful advice, please check out my website at watersgardencenter.com for classes, videos, and more. Or my online garden center at top10plants.com. Throughout the week, Lisa and I can be found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott.